In this video, I'm going to describe making websites using sites at Penn State, which is Penn State's uh, implementation of WordPress websites. From this webpage, sites.psu.edu, you can create a new site by pressing this button, which will lead you to a, um, a choice of the title of the website and I believe also the theme uh, for the website. This top menu is present on the main Sites at Penn State page and here uh, is a drop-down menu called My Sites which lists the different sites that I have either created or am an author of. And so in particular this site MD Simulation Techniques and Application I can get to in this way. I can also get to it simply by going to that site, uh, which will, if I visit the site, then I see the site as it is, and then also have access to the dashboard, which will allow me to edit this site. So if I go to this dashboard, then I have a long uh, vertical menu over here of different uh, things that I can do or change about the website. Here, for example, I can add a new user, um, which typically means a new contributor or a new author or editor of the site to um, enable someone else to contribute and change content on the site. Many of the different themes available in uh, sites at Penn State are basically for blogs and a prominent feature of this uh, menu over here are posts. Um, so if you have a website which is essentially a set of comments uh, then that is your main feature. Um, the web page we're looking at here is what would be called a static web page, one in which information is presented uh, organized in some way and so posts and a page with posts are not important. So from here I can visit this site to see how it looks and you can see that this MD Simulation Techniques and Applications uh, web page has a home page which starts out with a discussion of learning by example and then we'll have a set of short descriptions of each of the different projects uh, which have been worked out. And this is the example project that I have created. If I click on this uh, header here, which is actually linked to that page, then I will go there and we can see what it looks like. It's also accessible from the top menu here. Each of these menu items points towards the project page uh, associated with that topic. So here we have the dielectric response um, example. There is a contents pane, which if I fold it out, will tell me what's on this page. Um, and I'm just sort of looking at the functional elements here, not describing uh, the content. Um, so we have headers, we have figures, we have text. Um, we scroll down, and then we have uh, multiple pages in this. So to go to the next page of this, um, then we are uh, here, and we have again uh, the contents panel now for this second page. Um, and scrolling down again, we have the third and final page uh, of this web page, which shows the results of the simulations carried out in a set of graphs, which are briefly commented on. And finally, a, um, a link to a tarball containing uh, the files needed to recreate these simulations. So these pages have been divided up both in terms of the um, topic, that is, this is the results, the second page was how you do it, the first page is describing what you're trying to do, uh, and as well they're not terribly long so that you can scroll from the top to the bottom without forgetting what you were doing. So to create such a page we use the editing features which can be accessed in different ways. Um, here from the left menu there is a menu item called Pages 
And so if I click on that, I get a list of all the pages that are present. The one we were looking at was this page called Dielectric Response. And so if I want to edit it, I can either click on this or click on the word edit. And that takes me to a panel which contains all the material that's on that page, but not in the completely formatted form that it appears on the web page, but close. I mean, it's, it's text and figures and headers uh, all folded up into this, into this box here. And one can edit this in pretty much the way that a word processor uh, functions. So this item right here, for example, is a heading, and there is a set of different headings and subheadings and so forth, which imply both a style, that is what uh, typeface and size and format are, are used, um, as well as uh, an interaction with the table of contents that we saw on the page. That is, everything which is a heading winds up in the table of contents on that page. And the text you can just type in, and the figures, as we'll see in a little, mo in a little moment, uh, you can insert uh, from the media gallery. Here is a page break, and that was inserted using insert page break, and that's how I avoid the web page being endlessly scrolling from the top to the bottom. When you make changes in the page, you need to push this update button in order to save the changes. You can also preview them with this preview button so you can see what the page will look like if you make a change without um, committing to it. If you press the update, it changes the current contents of the page. One more thing to notice about this uh, page editing uh, is the templates over here. So this particular web page, uh, and indeed all of the project web pages on this website, are the so-called full width page template no sidebar. The home page is different. So there is one page, which is the home page, the front page, and it is this default template and if we go and view that page, as we can do here, then we see that the home page has this additional stuff on the right. Contact information, a few quick links, a way to search the site, and so forth. And the other pages don't have that. Um, indeed, they don't need it, and, and so that's why they've been set up uh, without those elements. So it's easy to go back and forth between viewing the page and editing it by clicking on these top menu items, View Page, Edit Page, so that one can go back and forth and see how does it look as a web page um, and, and make changes accordingly. So we saw that there was a figure uh, in, this, uh, in this web page here, and how that figure got there is from the media gallery, so the media library. So these figures have been uploaded by using this Add New button, and you can then uh, select files off of your computer um, to uh, upload. And um, recommended uh, formats for figures on web pages would be uh, PNGs and JPEGs. Um, media, you'll notice, can also include non-graphical files. Here, the tarball is, is, a, is, a, is an item of media. Um, of course, it can't be displayed, but it can be linked to, as we can see uh, a little bit later. If I click on one of these figures, then I get uh, several useful things about it. It comes in with a title. Um, here is where you can type in a caption. Um, and then when you insert the figure into your web page someplace, the caption will be automatically provided. Um, here also is a URL to the figure itself, which if you need a separate link to it, um, you, can, you can have that. Um, the tarball, for example, we need the link to that 
in order to provide a way for people to download uh, the tarball. So going back to the page for a moment, if I want to add another figure someplace, then I click in somewhere where I'd like to add the figure. And then I would click Add Media, and then I would choose the thing I want to add and insert it into the page. And then it can be resized at this point by clicking on it and uh, dragging the file handle. Um, and also you can choose how it should be aligned and, and whether it should have text wrapping around it. So if it is aligned le left, text will wrap to the right. If it's aligned right, text wraps to the left. If you align it in the center, it doesn't show here, but it will align in the center on the web page and no text will wrap around it. The caption, as I said, comes in with the figure if you've set it beforehand. If you want to edit the caption, for example, adding a figure number, um, it's easy to do that just by clicking into the caption and typing. If I want to add a link, uh, say to have a piece of text link to a certain thing, then I can do that by inserting a link. And at this point, you can paste in the URL to which this should link. And that URL can be the URL of, for example, a page that is part of the website, or it can be an external URL, or it can be the URL of an uploaded file. Um, so, for example, uh, I might choose, if I wanted to link to another page, um, here are some of the pages that I've recently linked to so that they're present. If I want to link to the URL of the tarball, for example, I would go to the tarball, um, copy the link, and then go back to editing the page. and pick wherever it was I thought I wanted to put that link. And then if I paste, um, I will get an active link to that tarball, which if we view the page now, um, I'm being prompted here because I didn't update the, uh, the page. So I'm gonna update the page so that those changes are committed and then view the page and we should see the word distribution is now a hyperlink, and if I click on it, it will, it will download the, uh, the tarball, which, of course, I don't want to do here, so I'm going to go back and edit the page and remove that. There are many aspects of the web page that can be changed, and an important one for a builder of a web page as opposed to a contributor are the menus. So this website has two menus, um, the top menu that we saw uh, on a given page and the side menu that was on the front page. To access those menus, we go to Appearance Menus. So there's two menus, as I said, there's the main menu, which is the one at the top, and if I select it, I will see um, the different items on that menu, and I can create new ones here um, by, for example, choosing um, one of the pages that's present and, and selecting it and adding to a menu, or I can make a custom link, which is just some general URL address and add that. I can make sub-menu items by uh, dragging, for example, this to be a sub-menu item of that, um, and so have a menu structure that is nested. The side menu on the front page is simple. Um, it's just three custom links, uh, one to the Penn State website, one to the chemical engineering website, and one to my research group. And those were all custom links created over here. Other aspects of the appearance of the web page that are commonly customized include um, the name and sort of tagline for the site. So if the site identity is 
MD simulation techniques and applications, and then the tagline is using Gromax to explore complex fluids and soft materials. That can be entered here. Um, the header image, this picture of Old Main, uh, can be selected here. As it says up here, the, the size of this image needs to be quite long and skinny, uh, 960 by 250 pixels, so you want to arrange that um, with, a, with an editor of, of photographs such as Graphic Converter uh, before you upload this into the, um, into the media uh, library where you can then select it uh, for this uh, purpose. Finally, the home page settings are where you say what page it is you want to be the home page. And so here you are the home page is, as I said before, a static page, not the blog posts. And the page that I have selected is this one called Learning by Example. Plugins can be used to give capabilities to the site that are not part of the default WordPress um, functionality. And there are a great number of these uh, plugins. I've only used a few in this web page, which can be found here by the fact that instead of being prompted to activate them, you're prompted to deactivate them. So I'm not using it here, but I have a thing uh, called Easy Tables Loaded, which is good for making uh, formatted tables. There is uh, something called Embed Any Document, which is used for accessing documents from Box or Dropbox or, um, or Google Drive or I forget other uh, places like that. There is a plugin for uh, including LaTeX input and rendering equations. There is a thing called MetaSlider, which is good for including slideshows, that is, you know, PowerPoint type slideshows. Um, there is a way of making a sitemap, which is good for making your website searchable. This table of contents feature that the pages have is also a plugin, and the settings for that, uh, for example, allow one to choose how many headings need to be present before you get such a table of contents, um, where it's supposed to appear, uh, what it's supposed to be called, and whether it's supposed to be turned on or off by default is in here someplace. That is, whether it's supposed to be, yes, hide table of contents initially, if you check that, then, then it shows as hidden when you first encounter the page. Settings for all of the plugins are available over here under the settings panel.